Oigram Bach to Dreis Auf Gold Did you need something? See you again. See ya. The one we are. Sabrandi and the old don. I have the man. They told me in the end of the game. Told me. They told me. Why? 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 
I'll be your opponent. It's my turn! Ha! Let's do it! Say! <laughs> yeah! Let's go! Let's do it! Ha! Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. It's my turn. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Nice work. Let's get going. Understood. Now, let's go. Sit. It's my turn. <laughs> It's my turn. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Nice work. Bring it on. Let's go! Crimson Slash! Yeah! More enemies? Bring them on! It's my turn! How's this? I'm up! Get back! It's down! This one's mine! It's my turn! Here's our chance! Breathe! Follow me! Understood! <laughs> We did it, Instructor Sarah. <laughs> you sure have grown up. Ah! My gun! Now! Bring it on! Bring wild on! Huh? I'll straight to the pieces! <laughs> now! An opening! It's my turn! Form Gale Now This one's mine 
Let's go! I got this! Let's move on! <laughs> so damn obvious. <laughs> it's easier if he ain't around anyway. Heading off on our own, are we? Yuna and the others should be here soon. An adventure like this would be much better with friends, don't you agree? You little... Your mask keeps slipping, by the way. But... You know that, don't you? Yeah, this is all part of your plan. <laughs> I'm a member of Class 7. Nothing more, nothing less. I heard oh, you really? complaining about Instructor Reen and thought you might want a friendly ear. Oh, really? Come now. We have a strategy to devise. No, we don't. Huh. What? Hello.
Was? Vanillerau. Mirror device, activate! <laughs> She's hot. That's clear. <laughs> this is a surprise. Is that a mirror device? Huh. So you're in town. Yes. Off duty, of course. Major Claire! Nice. You sure look good in civilian clothes. Good evening, Rain. And to you two as well, Sarah, Angelica. I stopped your perpetrator here, but maybe I overdid it a tad? No robot job here. So go.
Excuse me. Are you? Oh yeah, this hand's a beaut. I like this a bitch. I messed up. Say, is it too late to back out on that bet? That's unbecoming of the king, you know. Oh, <laughs> low blow. All right, dealer. Let's get this show on the road. If you would, gentlemen, please show your hands. Well, hey, nice to see you again. <laughs> Where'd I see you before? Sutherland? You're a sight for sore eyes, Purple Lightning. Long time no see, Icy Maiden. Hmm? Have I seen this other one around somewhere before? You'd make any man jealous being surrounded by such beauties. All right. What do you say we take this little chat to that lounge by the corner? That is what you came here for, isn't it? Hey, I remember you lot. See some new faces, too. Nice to see you again, Black Rabbit. <laughs> what brings you guys here? That's our line. We came all this way to find you playing cards? <laughs> Let's talk later.
Surely you've realized who they are by now, Sarah Valestine. The dead soldiers who, even after losing the Northern War, couldn't throw their pride away. The deserters from the Northern Jaegers. Huh? The Northern Jaegers? Uh, are they? They're a large-scale Jaeger Corps, which was based in the former North Ambria State. I was afraid of this. One, and you're not giving us Jack besides a name and who's backing who? What can I say? We're fine with letting a little secret slip out here and there. But you ain't earned more than that. I think that's plenty for now. Um. <sighs> Screw off. I knew it. I will say, though, those were some solid matches. See you again soon. This was fun. Later. Should the chance come, let's play again. Until then. Sure. Unacceptable.
didn't know that happened. <laughs> yeah, you and George really saved my bacon that time. Hmm, is that Reen I sense lurking out there? Oh, <laughs> why don't you come in, silly? Are you something like that? Yeah. That's enough, Claire. Though you have the Chancellor's protection, your actions today are only going to come back to bite you. Huh? You don't understand, Michael. <laughs> Show Who's yourself! There? Michael said no. Major Irving is my cousin. He was born Michael Revelt. We were, once. But ten years ago he took his mother's surname and abandoned the name Revelt. It was after I had the man who took my family away executed. That man was my uncle. His father. Perhaps you are familiar with the Revelt Company? They're known for making musical instruments. Well, they were originally located in St. Ark. My father was the president, and my uncle the vice president. The company was doing well. But more importantly, our family was happy. Until an horrible car accident. There weren't many of them on the roads back then. A stolen truck crashed into us. Then its driver disappeared into the night. In the end, they never found him. It became a cold case. My parents and my little brother died in that accident. But by some miracle, I survived. And my uncle's family took me in. After my father's death, my uncle took control of the company. Though I was grateful to him for taking me in, I couldn't help but ask myself, why was I the only one to survive? Soon after that, while looking through my father's things, I found the account books. Flipping through them, I noticed something strange. The Revelt Company prided itself on offering high-quality, carefully crafted instruments at an affordable price. But certain entries showed unbelievable spikes in profits. I had a feeling something was wrong, so I looked a little deeper. Each account book I read put things in starker relief. At last, I realized what my uncle had been doing right under my father's nose. He was making a fortune selling cheap, mass-produced instruments from abroad under the Revelt Company name. He even had the gall to commission a product he could sell as maestro class to scam people out of even more money. 
I knew Father must have noticed his brother's wrongdoing and planned to question him. But before he could, the accident took his life. When I confronted my uncle about this, he was surprisingly candid. You've got no proof. And if you did have any, I've got several powerful nobles ready to back me up should it come to that. Even if you talk, the most suspicious part of that accident is that you're the lone survivor. Good luck getting anyone to listen to you. I was angry, yes. But more oh, than baby. that, I was heartbroken. I didn't know what to do with myself. Until he showed up. I was a friend of your father's in military school. I thought the accident seemed peculiar. Do forgive me for allowing you to suffer for so long on your own. Yeah. Somehow, he knew the truth behind the accident. Came back for a moment. Until he said... You have a gift. Enhanced cognition. It allows you to grasp every detail, great or small of any given situation in an instant. It must have awakened during the accident. I was going to mete out the murderer's punishment myself, but I've changed my mind. You have the means and the ability. Why not use them to avenge your family? I was petrified when I heard this, lost. All I could see were the smiling faces of my parents and my beloved little brother. That's when I decided to take His Excellency's advice. I gathered every last scrap of evidence I could find against my uncle. I laid everything bare. The plot, the motive, the cover-up, the perpetrator. I had too much evidence to be silenced. I made my voice louder and louder until it reached Marquis High Arm's ears. Soon after, the nobles protecting my uncle stepped aside. My uncle's judgment was swift, harsh, and fair. He was put to death for his actions. I had my revenge. But it came at a price. I lost my family and my hometown. As soon as the company was in my control, I gave the rights to a longtime employee. All so I could enroll in the military academy suggested by His Excellency. Also, I could enroll in Thor's. <sighs> You're right. It was sheer coincidence that we both joined the RMP. But he's always looked out for me, both as a superior officer and as a colleague. Not that I've ever felt like I deserved it. I gave in to my desire for vengeance and mercilessly sent my own uncle to his death. Ten years ago, my aunt and my cousins cursed my name as I robbed them of the man they loved. I imagine they must still hate me for what I did. Green. Well, you really are too kind. To be perfectly honest, you remind me of my brother. Emil. His name was Emil. If he were alive, I think he'd be about your age. Thank you for hearing me out. But I think tonight is the last time I'll compare you to my brother. It's disrespectful. Both to him and to the man you've become. Good night, Rain. Sweet dreams. Ha. Ah.
It's Spiritus. Liquor from North Ambria. Said to be the strongest drink in the world. Guess it's kind of hard to get much stronger than 96% though, huh? Mm. <laughs> right? I knew you'd be able to appreciate it. Never thought the day'd come when I'd get to talk with you over drinks like this. That new Class 7 of yours? They're a good bunch of kids. They're all pretty unique kids, just like you guys were. But I know things will work out for you. I mean, come on. They were all so worried about you, they ran headlong after you. You already knew, didn't you? Who those purple Jaegers are. That's so. Guess I've still got a ways to go myself in that case. That's a nice little scenario, Reen. But you know it's a load of bull, don't you? The annexation of North Ambria was done under the Imperial government's orders. Way I hear it. General Le Guin agreed to take the place over to keep the provincial armies from being disbanded. The outcome was decided from the start. In the middle of that farce of a war, you managed to save the lives of tens of thousands of citizens. And the Jaegers you met today? I think they know that. But maybe it was impossible from the start, fixing a country already being destroyed from within by Jaegers. You probably knew that too. Whoopsie! Well, you see, he... <laughs> he was my first love. Oh. Well, actually, he was the closest thing I had to a dad. Way back during the North Ambrian disaster, when the salt pail covered so much of the Principality in a storm of salt, a man took in an orphaned infant. He was a former colonel in the army, and one of the people who founded the Northern Jaegers. As soon as I was old enough to understand anything, I knew that Jaeger- It was there that I experienced my first real battle. It was hell. A field of death, where lives are tossed aside to satisfy someone else's desires. There I lived, smoke and blood painted across my body. And there I stayed, eventually becoming the Jaeger known as the Purple Lightning. But after a while, it reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. When I was 18, I was assigned command of a squad. We had a mission near Erebonia, fighting some proxy war on behalf of the nobles. The enemy was Needhog. 
my squad was destroying them. But just when we thought victory was ours, our efforts to avoid dragging any civilians into the fight left us open to a counterattack. We got hit hard. And then my dad showed up and saved me. Even though he was serving as the commander for the entire Corps, he came to our rescue and suffered a fatal injury for it. Do you see now? This is the fate of all Jaegers. You must think long and hard on whether you wish to continue down this path. It could have been because he was once part of the Principality's army, but he was quite the gentleman. Now that I think back, he never seemed to like the fact that I became a Jaeger. Anyway, he left me with those final words and passed away in my arms. I screamed and screamed until my voice gave out until I passed out from utter exhaustion. When I woke up, I was in an Imperial army camp. Ah, okay. Yeah, apparently they were there to check on the damage caused by all the Jaegers fighting. Neidhardt and Mueller Vander, who were both second lieutenants back then, were there too. They told me the battle had been over for a while, and all my comrades had already packed up and left for home. Hadn't even thanked them before rushing back to my hometown. And what greeted me when I got there were celebrations and congratulations from my friends and the townsfolk. We had lost my father, but we won the war we were hired for. The nobles had given us an enormous pile of Mira. That meant we wouldn't die of starvation during the coming winter. I was relieved, but my tears just wouldn't stop. In order to save my hometown from poverty, I covered myself in the smoke of war and the blood of innocence in foreign lands. Seeing the smiles on the faces of everyone in town and knowing the cost cut me deep. It was right then that I decided to quit being a Jaeger and leave my hometown. I joined up with the Bracer Guild, knowing I could put my combat skills to work and make some decent Mira if I hit A rank. That way I could send some money back home. Money that wasn't stained with blood. I see. I see. <laughs> I'm not strong or kind, but I think I've finally started to get closer. Little by little. Closer to being like the man I admired so much. My dad. My commander. And my first love. <laughs> yeah, no getting around the fact that I've got myself the daddy of all father complexes. But, you know, lately I've found myself attracted to some younger guys. You got me talking too much. You don't watch yourself. You could make a real dangerous womanizer. Oh, and I'll have you know, I don't really appreciate being second after Little Miss Major. Well, with that... I bid you good night and sweet dreams. Ah, okay. Good night. Yeah. Good work out there. So, I will see you guys on the next episode.